Hi, we're going to do a quick teardown of this uh, DMX uh, stage lighting uh, disco-y type uh, light controller that I scored from the uh, J-Car sale. And if you haven't seen that, uh, click over to the previous uh, J-Car video. I got two complete sets of these. There's actually four lights, came in a padded bag and everything else. We've got the DMX uh, controller itself. And... I got them for a dollar. So, <laughs> like, you know, meh. Anyway, we're going to take a look at them. They look pretty crusty. You can smell the dodginess in this thing. The first thing you notice is that it doesn't really have a brand at all. I'll link to the uh, J Car page down below. It's like, this was like a $400 set or something like that. I don't think they could sell them at $279 or whatever. And, like, there is no branding on these at all. The bag itself, the big padded uh, bag had uh, Rave on it, so it was like sold under the Rave brand. But uh, yeah, there is just nothing on this controller at all. There is absolutely no um, branding whatsoever. So, you know, right there it sets off alarm bells that this is the cheapest heap of crap you're going to find. And yeah, it just it looks and feels like the cheapest quality thing possible. So here's the big padded bag. It came in with the rave symbol and it came with this uh, foot controller as well. So you can uh, suspend it, you can call up the menu and you can go up and full. Um, so yeah, you got four lights with it and it came with a, uh, this is supposedly non-working, faulty XLR socket. Controller doing really strange things. Hmm. Anyway, that's why it was in the uh, dumpster for a buck. But I don't know, I tell you what, I might have actually been ripped off for a dollar um, because these are pretty crusty. These actually uh, fold out like this. These arms fold out so you can plug the controller. You can have the lights uh, spread out. So there's actually uh, the four sockets on the bottom here for the uh, four lights and the controller interface, DMX in and out, and the menu and enter and power. Well... Yeah, I'm going to violate the rule and actually power it up. Because I want to see if these things do actually work. Now, I have no idea if you're going to be able to see this or not. Um, excuse the reflections from the lights overhead. But some of these LEDs in here look different to some of the others. So it's really unusual. This is supposed to be like a full RGB uh, matrix. But when I look down there, some of like that one is different to all the other ones around it. It's almost if... It was like, you know, a different colored lead in there. You uh, might, you often find that in uh, selectable colored lead uh, lighting systems that you can buy for your home and stuff like that. You know, different color temperatures. And they do that by mixing uh, white leads of a certain color temperature, mixing them with uh, yellow and other, and well, maybe other colors. I'm not sure. But anyway, mix them with like a yellow leads or something like that just to change the uh, color matrix. But yeah, they do look slightly different. Uh, die inside the LEDs um, in some pattern. Anyway, I don't know. We've got uh, 12 volts and RG and B in there, but yeah, these things, 10 millimeter LEDs, they look pretty crusty, but even for a dollar, just stripping the RGB LEDs out of these things, <laughs> got to be worth it. Check out the <laughs> socket. <laughs> yeah, it's um, dodgy, all right. It's like it's fallen out of there. It's been stripped or something. Anyway, I'll see if I can actually um, plug it, made it up and plug it in. All right, let's power this baby up and whoa, hello. Whoa, they flashed. Got some goggledy, gobbledygook on the display there. Um, menu, what? PU75, PU45, what? P37? This? No, it wasn't display, was it? No? What? It's all over the shop. Wow. You have no idea. You'd have to read the manual on that. Anyway, I'm going to try my foot controller. Menu. Nope. Up. Nope. And nope. Full. No, foot controller doesn't work. But you saw it. Those LEDs came on. Let's try that again. Got to let the cap discharge. There we go. Whoa, yeah, red, green, and what, what? Yeah, anyway, they kind of, sort of work. Anyway, let's tear down this uh, puppy down, and we're, this is going to be crusty as inside, I'm sure. 
Well, there you have it. That really is quite meh inside here. Uh, we've got ourselves a bunch of uh, switching trannies here, which is what you'd expect. I'll show you those up closer in a minute. Oh, that's really how you're doing wiring on that uh, dodgy as one hung low brand um, XLR connector. Jeez, no genuine stuff in here. No siree, Bob. Anyway, we've got ourselves an Atmel uh, processor there. We'll have a squiz at that. And a couple of probably, what are they, 74... 7400 series, something or other, I don't know, we'll take a look, but there's not much doing there, the solders, soldering's crusty as, actually, let me show you that. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> there's no solder on these pins, what is it on the other side? I don't know, but that's as dry as a dead dingo's donger. Unbelievable. And that's an AT Mega 16 for those playing long at home. And we've got ourselves 20 N03 N-channel MOSFETs down in here. The finest that AliExpress has to offer. And you'll notice bugger all uh, heat sinking on these things. They just haven't bothered. So I don't know what the ratings of these uh, LEDs are. What I know absolutely nothing about this thing. It just says like power consumption 120 watts maximum. You know, like... <laughs> Like, means absolutely nothing. So, yeah, these things aren't um, going to be, well, you know, the, the losses in them are going to be relatively small, but still, they're just, they're in power packages and they're not, there's no heat sinking on those at all. And of course, 74HC595's classic chip. I used to love these when I was a kid. Serial addressable latches. Absolutely fantastic. Still used in a ton of stuff these days. Very common for uh, dry, you know, individually addressable lead drivers and uh, stuff like that. And of course, via DMX control, uh, it allows you to set the uh, brightness of the LED. So these are just uh, PWM in the, uh, presumably, uh, well, I, is, is there a constant current? driver power supply mm, looks like just hope there's are we going to find dropper resistors in the <laughs> lead um lights which we'll take apart in a minute it's looking likely so apart from being a little bit dodgy you know like it's all cable tied okay and they've put uh protection sleeving over these which go into those that swing it which goes into the arm that uh swings around here so they've got to have that that's all right and the mains input was okay they've actually man they went to the effort look to scrape off the uh anodizing there although that's all oh uh, you know no they should that's not properly crimped anyway <laughs> <laughs> Our power supplies up under there somewhere. Hmm. Once again, we've got the finest that AliExpress has to offer. Um, HSE power. It's a hundred watt, uh, twelve volt output uh, lead driver. Doesn't say. Well, it, it's mostly in Chinese, but uh, I couldn't get an actual data sheet. But there's, you know, it's a hundred watt uh, supply and uh, twelve volts DC nominal. So presumably, it's twelve volts DC output, and um, it's not. A constant current driver. So, yeah, looks like we're going to find dropper resistors inside those lead arrays. Hmm. Because all we're doing here is basically uh, generating uh, it's just a 12 volt uh, power supply, and then over here we're just using these MOSFETs to uh, pulse width modulate the 12 volts going to whatever lead strings. I mean, how many we got there? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we've got three of those per array, and that makes sense because you've got to have one for the red, green, and blue. And sure enough, if you look at the uh, wires, we will have three for each one. Whoop. Plus, uh, yep, plus two power. So we've got ourselves 145 RGB LEDs in here. We're going to have the a uh, dropper resistor in each uh, string because you can't fit, you know, it's not like they're all in one string because we've only got 12 volts uh, compliant voltage. So we're going to have multiple parallel ones with dropper resistors in there. Presumably they might have sprung for dropper resistors, but this is not going to be big power anyway. I mean, the wiring we're talking about here, this is really pissant wiring in there. So... You know, it's really, these things are not high power at all. These will be, uh, these LEDs will be from whatever uh, stall in the Shenzhen market that they're able to get them from that month, no doubt. And uh, let's take a look. I mean, that's just, uh, that is, yeah, it's some crappy polycarb. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, uh, the, <laughs> these weren't for heat sinking. If you're thinking that the aluminium around the uh, outside here, nah, it's just for show. Um, there's no heat sink at all. These are, you're getting the illusion of high power without the expense. So let's have a look. You can see some jumper links in the uh, center of the boards there. I demagnetized this the other day. I've got to magnetize this puppy. And there we go. Sweet. So you've got to get one of those magnetizers, demagnetizers, if you don't have one, by the way. And here we go. We're in like Flynn and little pissant 1206 dropper resistors. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can see how they've uh, glued those down so they've actually wave soldered the entire back of this thing. You can see those little red uh, red marks. They're the glue underneath the resistors holding them down so they go through the uh, bubble bath. Solder bubble bath. I mean, look at this. They didn't even bother with a proper connector on there. I mean, they had the through hole thing for the connector and they just went, ah, oh, no, screw that. And <laughs> unbelievable. Those pins are sticking out a long way. They're sharp as, but yeah, that's really pathetic. What else is there more to show you in this thing? It's just, sorry, it's boring as. A completely crappy, built down to a price, DMX uh, LED lighting disco-y type thing. Um, yes, it did actually have, it has actually a uh, microphone inside here so you can one of the modes is actually just to set it up so you don't have to do any dmx control at all you can just buy these set them up at your party or whatever your rave and uh and just have the lights just flash in different colors just based on the music and everything else how complicated that is in there it's not going to be doing fft or anything fancy like that um getting the spectrum or whatever and uh and doing the colors so it's just yeah, faking some light show based on the uh, audio level, but that is just crap quality. That is awful. Anyway, if you've got any ideas what I can do with that, because they're of it, like, as a controller, it's no good. Even, like, the chassis is just the crappest quality. Chassis, unbelievable. But I don't know, is that any good for anything? Shenzhen Market, uh, no-name RGB LEDs, I don't know, 10 millimeter RGB LEDs, that's a reasonable score, you know, you could desolder those and put them in your parts drawer or possibly um, use them for something, I don't know, but who knows what the specs on that, those things are, couldn't really care less. I'll tell you one thing though, they've done a reasonable job getting that uh, layout single-sided with that, you know, they've only got a few links, you can maybe see those uh, little jumper links down in there, I don't know, could you have got away with that without any links, but uh, I hate the white solder mask. It's hard to see the traces underneath. Real pain in the ass. Okay, so let's power this turd up and uh, see how much current she draws. There you go. It's only one and a half watts. <laughs> Point. That's full power. Wow. So there you go. The green draws 5.6 watts. 0.47 amps or thereabouts. And... The red is a measly 1.4 watts. This is hopeless. Like, this is assuming, of course, that the MOSFET is completely on. Um, and look, even the pattern is not complete. I'm assuming that, like, <laughs> it is, like, not universal pattern in there. Like, it's not uh, symmetrical, consistent, whatever you want to call it. Well, the blue, 5.7 watts as well. So blue and green are the same, but the red is completely piss poor. The blue, though, does seem to have a symmetrical pattern on it. Yeah, and the green, but the red, oh. So as you'd expect with heaps of crap like this, you know, just one hung low, slapped together, no name stuff, uh, like the, they're not even, the intensity, uh, power and LEDs and everything else, not even uh, controlled between the red, green and blue uh, channels. That's a massive difference there. I'm not going to bother getting my uh, spectrum spectrometer out and, you know, light meter and things like that and getting uh, readings. It's just not worth it. These things are just crap yeah they kind of work you know you buy them from jk you set them up at your party and you switch the microphone on no i reckon nobody used these with the dmx i like I, i'd be very surprised because usually you know dmx implies some you know you're at least doing something semi 
professionally. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of people who jump down my throat on that. But, you know, you go into effort to control this. You have to uh, do software to control it and everything else. You've got to have a control and the whole works. I reckon most people who bought these... Um, would just be like using the internal mic. They just want some lights to flash at your party. And well, you know, it's probably going to do the job, but yeah, it's just really built down to a cost. It's just a heap of crap, really. But I don't, you know, it kind of sort of works. Mm. So I guess I was uh, pretty naive to think that uh, they that would be a full RGB matrix array at any sort well i knew it wasn't going to be like a high powered thing and yeah it's not it's you know it's bugger all but yeah and the you know the efficient these leds would be like the super crappest ones i can get as i said whatever came whatever they could get at the markets at shenzhen uh, markets at the time probably went in this thing if you bought them like a year later they wouldn't have the same leds they wouldn't have the same parts they'd have something else slapped in them Terrible Muriel. And when I picked these up at the uh, J Car sale, I didn't even know what they uh, were. I just saw, oh, look, lights. They look like, I don't know, some form of crappy uh, studio light or something like that. I just assumed that they were white uh, LEDs and that you could control them off and on or something like that. I didn't know that they were uh, full color. So I thought, I don't know, maybe they'd be useful as some uh, studio lights down in the bunker or something like that. But the RGB ones like this, they're useless to me. And I got two sets of these so i've got eight light sets and but i only got one controller though and uh but i've got two foot switches oh the foot switch hang on actually the foot controller is probably going to be the most useful thing out of this because you know that you, you could have these under your bench and you could control uh stuff you could control like a paste dispenser um or you know a, anything use your use your imagination and uh if we flip that out it's just got a bit of bit of perspex under there, and there's our switch. Oh, that is so how you doing. Is that hot snot down in there? I think it is. So these are really built down to price. I'll just have a quick squeeze inside, but that's terrible. But still, you know, hey, it's a you know a nice and sturdy box. It's all together, you know, it's got a uh, XLR interface on it, so that's that might be the handiest thing out of that. Maybe that's worth a buck. Mm. And that's the finest hot snot and dry as a dead dingo's donger joints down there. Look at that. So, did I get a bargain for a buck or did I get ripped off? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Catch you next time.